Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's live coverage here in Atlanta, Georgia, Supercomputing 24, SC24. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante, my co host, of course. We also host theCUBE pod every Friday. Check it out, subscribe. It's the number one enterprise podcast. Today we're talking about supercomputing, super clusters, super storage, super networking. The world is going supernova. Of course, theCUBE has got it. And the people powering this revolution are here on theCUBE. DDN, Alex Mazzari is the co founder and CEO of DDN. Welcome back to theCUBE. It's looking good as usual. John, thank you. Great to be here with you. Really appreciate the opportunity. So that everyone right now is rushing hard. They're recognizing the end of the era, of the old era, in, in comes the new era. Our new architectures are changing. Transformers really brought the old AI algorithms yep. to modern era. Now we're in new architectures and now new software, kind of post-modern era AI, if you want to call yeah, it that, yeah. is coming on. You're starting to see the scale kick in. Everyone's trying to figure out how to power the Gen AI workloads and soon to be agentic, the compute, the data. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the data has to be stored somewhere. That's this is your legendary That's status at DDN, your company you founded, continue to run. Great, Max. Give us the update on where you guys are on this. You're here at the big shows, GTC, supercomputing, yep. big booths, big business. What's up? So, lots of really interesting things, John. I mean, as, as you said, uh, the industry is completely transforming. I mean, what used to be high-performance computing, limited to a small set of customers, government agencies, industries, and so on, has now blossomed and broadened, and it's all about AI. And what is AI but data intelligence? That's what we like to call it. It's not artificial intelligence, it's data intelligence. You have to be able to ingest the data, images, audio, text, video, from lots of different sources. You have to be able to analyze it, process it, gain insight from it, and then deliver that insight to organizations who will then benefit from it. And we are at the core of it. We are the data intelligence platform that propels the growth of AI across industries and market segments. And you've ridden the wave of storage and through me, every major inflection point. Before we get into some of the things you're doing now from a value per creation perspective, Share your personal observation of the, this inflection, what I call the end of the era and to the new era of clustered systems. I just wrote a blog post on that yesterday. We are in a whole nother era that's going to change the data center, the edge. Right. Scope the magnitude of this point in history in this computer storage revolution. Sure, so uh, I really think that the inflection point is one of orders of magnitude. This is no longer two times, five times, 10 times. It's a global pivot of the economy in all of its aspects, every industry, everything we do at work, everything we do at play, health, security, governments, everything is pivoting and being enabled by AI. And in order to do that, you have to deal with massive data sets. And you have to be able to not just monetize for industries, but you have to be able to gain insight. Scientific discovery is getting propelled by that. So it's orders of magnitude, and what is changing, it's the game is no longer happening inside the stack. It's no longer about processing and networking and storage. It's all about the data. And the data resides above the stack. The AI frameworks, the large language model, Gen AI inference, it's above the stack. So the enablement needs to come above the stack. And that's the technology that we've developed, which is being utilized by many of the largest organizations in the world just to leverage your capabilities of AI. It's global, and it's happening like a tidal yeah. wave, as you know. Yeah, and by the way, the economic piece, I know Dave's going to jump in in a second here, but this productivity is the killer app because the labor changes, the economics change, productivity gains will have the significant impact on the economic yes, aspect yes, of yes, it. Yes, yes. I mean, cloud was great labor change. 10X engineer, go to the cloud. Okay, I get that. But now with Gen AI, it's a everything X. This, this is a whole other level because what AI is doing is it's giving us superpowers. No matter what you do, your capabilities are getting amplified. If you're an engineer, you can now write code so much faster, so much better. You can, you can get to that point where the capabilities are getting pulled into the technology much, much faster. So it's supercharging all of us. It's supercharging marketing. It's supercharging your business, every business. Anything that has to do with data, with content, is getting supercharged. And, and that is just incredible. I cannot think of a better time 
to be in technology than now. <laughs> we agree. It's Amen. Yes. Yeah, I, I want to comment on a couple of things. I, I like how you term data intelligence because there really isn't anything artificial Absolutely. about it. It's real. It's synthetic data. Why do they call it AI? It's not <laughs> AI. It's DI. It's right. data intelligence. So I like that. Gen DI. And, and I think the story of DDN is remarkable. We've known you guys for a long time. In fact, we used to have a DDN system. I don't know if we yeah. still have it. We had a DDN called the first <laughs> option. It was the first option yes. story yes. Uh, okay. with yes. SATA drives. Yes. It was heavy as hell. And I remember <laughs> you, you dug into your, your architecture and it was very novel and you guys were the gold standard in what was considered a niche that is now collided with this multi-trillion dollar economy. Yes. So, like, how has your company evolved? How is your product set evolving? And bring us into 2024 and, and beyond. Sure, so, so again, the foundation for AI, we believe, is in high performance computing. Because in high performance computing, you have to solve problems at massive scale. So you have to develop technology that maximizes efficiency at massive scale in the data center. Well, AI is simply that magnified and distributed. I mean, if you look at the leaders in the space, we all came from high-performance computing. NVIDIA started out in high-performance computing, and the technology that they developed over decades then pivoted into enabling AI. Same thing with DDN. We started in high-performance computing, we were powering 60 out of the 100 fastest supercomputers in the world, and it just so happens that that technology, the millions of lines of code that we wrote for high-performance computing was a natural segue into AI. And, and the way all of that happened is, eight years ago, NVIDIA tapped us on the shoulder and said, hey, Didian, we want to stand up a super pod. We want to demonstrate the capabilities of NVIDIA and GPUs. And we've looked at every storage technology out there, we don't see anything that can do it as well as you. So we became part of NVIDIA SuperPod. Eight years later, we're the only technology that is being used internally by NVIDIA. We're the only data intelligence platform, the only data storage technology used by NVIDIA internally. I mean, that speaks volumes. So that started us on that path. And then lots of things followed. Hundreds and hundreds of very large scale deployments across customers but the enabler was the pivot from high performance computing into AI. That was 2016, and so you did that deep integration in the middle of last decade. Absolutely. And now you're harvesting that in the AI era. Totally, it takes time. There are no miracles, right? <laughs> yeah, right? You have to develop the technology. It takes a long time to develop it. You have to solve all of the corner cases. It's not just about, oh, I have this great technology which on paper works. Well, no, it has to work in the real world and we learned those lessons with high performance computing. We did all of those very large scale deployments, learned all the lessons of networking challenges and compute challenges and GPU yeah. and so on. We solved all those problems and now it's applicable to That's Jassy's law, right? Yeah. The compression well, algorithm for experience well, and it applies well, at, at times 10 here. Well, the Jassy law about uh, compression algorithm for experience is definitely in case. Now the new thing we're seeing in the market is at scale experience. Yes. AWS and NVIDIA have shown that, that's why NVIDIA is building their own machines, by the way, as everyone else is. When you hit scale, you see things that you can solve problems for that no one else sees. Absolutely. And, you, and you've experienced that with NVIDIA. So I want to ask you, first of all, what are some of those problems at scale do you see that you guys have solved? Uh, and then two, what other collaborations besides NVIDIA that match that kind of scale sure. magnitude that you're working with? Sure, so, so the challenges are twofold. I mean, if you ask people who are doing large-scale AI deployments, what are the problems you're faced with? They will tell you three things, all of them. Lack of availability of GPUs. We cannot get enough GPUs from NVIDIA. Six. Not enough data center space. There just isn't enough data center space out there. And not enough power. Yeah. And so the problems you have to solve in the data center are deliver better efficiency out of the GPUs. So we've written hundreds of thousands of lines of code to solve that particular problem. How do we make the NVIDIA GPUs perform better, at more efficiency, and all the time? No idle time. That's what you want to do. So we solve that problem. Data center space, we have shrunk the square footage, the footprint required in a data center to deliver a certain level of performance for AI by a factor of 10, and we've shrunk power consumption by a factor of 10. That's in the data center. Then you have above the stack. So all of this is great and wonderful. Yeah. You're improving efficiency. 
but you need to make the models run far more efficiently. The large language models and Gen AI, we have solved that problem with additional code that we've written to make those things go much, much faster. So who is doing things at the scale of NVIDIA right now? Well, we have one customer, XAI, 100,000 GPUs, or the infrastructure that is enabling and facilitating what they do. And they are doing things at absolutely massive scale. So we have NVIDIA on the one hand, massive scale running at what I call unreasonable velocity. You have XAI and Elon on the other side, massive scale running at unreasonable velocity. And we are the enabler of both sides of this. So yeah. everything else becomes far easier so, when you're solving so the problem. So, so Elon is challenging yes. Jassy's law, right? With unreasonable Absolutely. velocity. Absolutely. <laughs> it, it is unreasonable velocity. I mean, look, Elon built that massive data center in a tenth of the time that the best high performance computing data centers were being built. Because he said, just like Jensen did at NVIDIA, I'm going to tear up everything I know, I have this much time to do it. How do I do it? Out of the box thinking. That's how Elon has done it, that's yeah. how Jensen and NVIDIA are. That's, that's how we try to do it. Out of the box thinking, that is awesome. I would also add that we're seeing systems thinking come into play. It's a systems problem now, opportunity. Yep. It's not like, remember the old ways, design thinking, iterate, you know, every, every has a fashionable way, but legitimately we're in a systems revolution. So I have to ask you, in these use cases you're seeing in the customers, the platforms you're working with, how would you describe the disruptive enabler? And I use the word disruptive enabler because it's disruptive. Yep. It's something's going to be disrupted, yeah. but it's enabling something. That's the JDI productivity things you mentioned earlier. What is the core disruptive enabler for this wave that you're seeing and how are you guys tying into it? Sure, so, so again, think of it as the problem that AI is solving is it's accelerating time to insight. It's giving better insight into things. Again, it doesn't matter if it's scientific discovery or you know a pivot in business enablement for a certain industry. Well, all of that is at one end of it, you have the data coming in. At the other end, you have the insight coming out. That has to be a distributed model. It has to be on-premise in data centers. It has to be in the cloud. It has to be multi-cloud and the data can reside anywhere and everywhere. And it will change at the snap of a finger. It will move from being on-prem to being in the cloud. It will move from being in this cloud to being in that cloud. So what is required technologically in order to disrupt and accelerate is you need technologies that are flexible enough to operate at massive scale in a highly distributed manner yeah. and adapt to the needs of the software suites at yeah. the AI frameworks that are the enablers of yeah. all this. That is the disruption. It is no longer the segmentation of there is the compute, there is the network, there Static is the Static thinking. Absolutely not. Right. It's out of the box, connect the dots differently, run at unreasonable velocity, yeah. and course correct as you go. It's interesting, we're seeing problems come up now that people, you, you hit the core problems, I agree there. But it's interesting, some of the conversations we're having on theCUBE is like resource allocation, cost optimization. Now we're in the weeds of some of the tactical things that go on around, yeah. okay, this dynamic environment. For example, customization's huge. Yeah. I got a model, I want to route the right model, data to the right, so you're getting into, um, Networking is changing, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. this is the holy trinity, compute, storage, and networking of computers. Absolutely. And so everything's now dynamic, customizable, scalable, and distributed. This is the new era. It is, and it's all about flexibility. So the technology needs to adapt, absorb, and amplify flexibility. In the data center, in the cloud, that's what we spent more than a decade perfecting technology which takes data intelligence yeah. and delivers it, analyzes it, processes it anywhere and changing at the snap of a finger because the yeah. world is continuously evolving. It's all about insight. Yeah. You have to curate the content. Yeah. You have to ingest it, you have to train it and you have to deliver it and it's constantly changing. Yeah. And that's the technology that DDN has developed. Yeah, you mentioned insights. I think one of the things we're, come, we're seeing is value coming out of this Gen AI model, whether you're talking about HPC, now with AI enablement, digital twins, whatever you're talking about, whatever apps, it's insight and action. Yep, yep. Are the yep. two words that pop out. Intentional, insight and action. That seems to be kind of a, a flavor Totally, and, and it's uh, it's an iterative process, and the iterations are unpredictable, which again takes us back to the flexibility. You need an infrastructure which is infinitely flexible, 
because the needs are continually evolving. The insight that you're gaining today might take you in a completely different direction. Well, that completely different direction might require a different makeup. Yeah. It might be more cloud-centric. You have to shift and pivot instantly from training your model to inference and Gen AI. And so flexibility, it's all about flexibility at massive scale and delivering efficiency at massive scale. Yeah. So you're a, such a contrarian, you have stayed private, yes. which is just remarkable. I'm curious yeah. as to how you think about your business now, because you're on an entirely, you just jumped an S-curve yes. to yes. a new yes. level. How are you thinking about in the future of DDN? So, I mean, it's very simple. What we've always focused on is customer delight. What do we need to do in order to delight our customers? And so, what we found in public companies, in many cases, is, well, you have to cater to the needs of your shareholders and your investors and also your customers. We've decided to stay razor sharp focused on catering to the needs of our customers. I think it served our customers better than if we had the distractions of quarterly earnings and some of the issues that public companies have to deal with, we will do whatever is best for our customers. We are at a point where our business is booming, exploding. Uh, I mean, AI has taken us to a whole other level of growth. Um, that growth is being facilitated. I mean, Jensen told us uh, several months ago, he said, do not go public. It's the wrong thing to do. Stay <laughs> private. You will take care of your customers much better if you stay a private company. But again, it's what is best yeah. for our customers. Customer yeah. delight is the only thing that matters yeah. to us. And it's being enablers in AI as best as we can. Yeah, you'd be, you would certainly help a lot of people who would love to participate in the upside going public be mainly other hand to that story, but I won't go there because, you know, private. There's, you know, there's a yeah. lot of interest, and we yeah, always I say, mean, what value can you bring to yeah. our customers? Yeah. And it's difficult. It's a very difficult thing. Again, customer, customer, customer. As you well yeah. know, yeah. it is all about the customer. Yeah, you're not yeah. capital constraints. Yeah. I mean, no. that's not a problem for DDN. Uh, we're, we're, not cap we're not like... Uh, you don't need the you cash know. to raise money. You got we don't need cash. the cash. We don't need to build massive infrastructures and data centers. Let's talk about your investment strategy. Obviously, the growth strategy is on the S-curve. Dave pointed that out. It's a great call out. Um, one of the things that we're seeing, and I want to get your reaction to this, yep. is that um, in this new AI era, there's almost been a shift in the developer community around um, how they look at the stack. You're seeing the best value extractors and creators in the entrepreneurial circles yeah. going down to the hardware. ISV layers emerging, yeah. usually it goes, hey, we'll play in the abstraction layers and builds on top of, on top of cloud, whether you're a Snowflake or Databricks in the world, okay, they're out there. But all the best AI developers are going yes. down to the kernel and the hardware level. They're going in the wrong direction by yes, conventional yes. standards. Yes. Why? Because performance is there. Yes. It reminds me of the old days of memory management or disk and memory and then flash came on. So there's always constraints to optimize around, but you're seeing an ecosystem develop of ISVs, yes. not like old school chip developers. We're talking about like classic software development. Yep, yep, yep. They're going down there. So I'm sure you agree, I'd love to get your thoughts on that, and whether you agree or disagree. Uh, if you agree, that creates an ecosystem for you, probably that's not the old DDN, where totally, you have to have a totally. connected ecosystem. So, growth strategy, role of the developer, going to the hardware, and what does your ecosystem look like? Partnerships probably are booming. This is, I know it's a, a different kind of technical question, yeah, but yeah. what's your thoughts? So, okay, so as far as the ecosystem goes, as, as you pointed out, it's really the optimization inside the stack. So we're increasingly interacting with organizations who are part of the stack, you know, the stack we're talking about in the data center, data center and cloud, and how do we deliver and build a flexible infrastructure that makes that happen. So we're investing very heavily in that, in being enablers to other participants in the stack. How do we make the large language models, the AI frameworks, and Gen AI run more efficiently? How do we shrink the data center space requirement? How do we shrink the power footprint requirement? So a lot of investments in that area and tying into, as you said, the ecosystems and the ISVs and so on and so forth. But there's equal value in operating above the stack. Uh, we've been doing that for several years now. Uh, it's been propelled by NVIDIA who said, well, 
the NIMS microservice capabilities. Well, how can we add value into that? So we're deeply tied into the NIMS and NVIDIA. NEMO, how do we deliver better frameworks that are flexible? We're tied into that. KV value stores, vector databases, object stores. So we're investing very, very heavily into R&D that addresses those requirements. So our investments, Sorry. it's always been that yeah. invest into technology, delight your customers by asking where the pain points are, where the challenges are, connect the dots, yeah. and then invest, invest, invest in R&D. We've always been an engineering company yeah. at heart, just like NVIDIA is, <laughs> just like Elon's companies are. We are an engineering company, so our investments yeah. are in that and continuing to yeah. broaden our footprint. And your value add is acceleration, and really efficiency. It's right. acceleration efficiency, reducing the footprint in the data center and in the cloud, accelerating the access and the insight of data and content above the stack. Yeah. So we're connecting the above the stack to the inside yeah. the stack, and that's what data intelligence is. And you, and you believe that developers are going closer to the hardware? Yeah, definitely. 100%, okay. Definitely, Be because, I mean, simply because the, the shortage of data center space, power requirements, and GPUs means you have to optimize in the stack. Squeeze the juice out of every performance you have possible. To. You, you, you need to get those GPUs running at 100% utilization. Absolutely. But you also need to enable above the stack. Many of the discussions yeah. we're having yeah. uh, with our customers who are in AI is how do we give you an order of magnitude better performance out of your analytics layer? If you're technical, it's party time up and down the stack and technology, every theater, so yes. to speak, is on fire from an innovation standpoint. I mean, look, the Omniverse, yeah. digital twins, these are huge enablers, huge yeah. pivots of the global economy. Yeah. AI factories, sovereign AI, we're involved in so many massive projects. I mean, 10,000 GPUs is tables, I mean, we're, we're, we're in projects which are hundreds of thousands of GPUs. Yes. It's massive scale, yeah. because the enablement is at the level of the global economy. Well, we love and the a million GPU clusters are coming. They're yeah. coming, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. They yeah. are coming. Yeah. Well, we love the digital twin concept. We're going to have a digital twin of this event. Look for the studios out there if you're watching. Alex, always a pleasure to have you on the queue. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a master class, it's a good riff session. And of course, getting that signal of what's happening. Thanks for coming Congratulations. on. Thank Congratulations. Thank you so much. Success. Really, really okay, appreciate this is theCUBE. it. I'm John Furrier with Dean Vellante. Bring you all the action here at Atlanta, live streaming on thecube.net. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Thank you. But